I wonder who they've got for me to talk to this time. No way! Daniel Ricardo, hello! <laughs> hey Rusty, what's going on? What's happening with you? What a crazy year. It's It has been, but uh, you know what? I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed, uh, well, obviously parts of it, but um, it's been crazy, but uh, I think... You know, I've been one of the, I guess, the fortunate ones who has been able to to get back to it, you know, pretty consistently now with work, I guess, racing. And uh, we've been really busy. Uh, lockdown, I got to spend on the farm in Australia. So I got some some extended time out there, which was good. So, um, look, obviously, I know I know the, the world's not in a great place, but uh, but all things considered, it's, it's been a pretty, a pretty good year. The back-to-back nature of the races this year, what's that been like? Are you enjoying that aspect of it? I, I am like I think it's it's part of because we didn't have it for so long. Um, you know, we were deprived of competition for so long, and and then getting into it and, and coming in with I think I think we had three triple headers on the bounce, um, and that was awesome. Like it, it is exhausting, but it's I and mean, when you've missed it for so long, you're going to take it any day of the week. So um, I loved it, and it was just really good to take like a, a rhythm routine, and I don't know, I, I feel like. I love back-to-backs always and, and triple head is great because, you know, you have a good weekend, you want to, you know, continue that momentum, you have a bad weekend and you want to quickly erase it and, and have a good one. So it's, it works both ways. It's made some cool additions to the schedule as well. Are there any tracks there that you, perhaps when you were little, you thought, man, I'd really like to go there or circuits that you may not have had a lot of experience at before that you're kind of pleased to tick the box on? Absolutely. You know, I was, I was sad that obviously we've missed, we've missed a few races this year, a few awesome venues and tracks. Um, but you know, the, the flip side is we've gone to already been to some awesome ones and, and we got a few more coming. So I mean, Mugello I raced at in, in 2007 and it was my favorite track in Europe at the time I was in love with it. So to go back to Mugello was awesome. I'm um, really looking forward to, I mean, we got Nürburgring coming up, um, Istanbul, which is going to be cool. So there's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to. So I, I, I do take my hat off to, to F1 and everyone who's actually made 2020 happen the way it has so far. It's been, they've done very well to squeeze everything in like they have. Yeah, they sure have. I'm glad you bring up Nürburgring too, because we're kind of talking to you not all that far out from uh, race weekend. You've had a, a weekend off. What have you done to sort of refresh in between time? Yeah, I've, I've definitely like the um, the weekends off have been. I'd say they've been relatively busy um, trying to fit in, you know, some some sponsor stuff or, or some marketing. But um, but also it's it's been important to switch off for a little bit, you know, especially the the triple headers. By the end of the third one, you everyone's flat. Like you can you can hear it even in like the pre race briefing on a Sunday. Everyone's like just waiting for the race to be kind of done. You can tell everyone's just thinking about it. so. Uh, not us drivers, but let's say uh, uh, but the general, you know, the, the energy starting to waver a little bit. So, um, yeah, normally like the first few days after a triple header, so say a Monday, Tuesday, I'm really just trying to switch off. And, you know, Monday, if, if I've got the freedom of having Monday to myself, then I'm literally just spending the day on the couch and just trying to really catch up on a bit of sleep. Um, and then, yeah, Tuesday as well is a bit steady. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then you start doing – whether it's some, some Zoom meetings, some, some conference calls, or whether it's a, an appearance or a virtual appearance. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of kind of behind the laptop trying to get deals done or keep deals going, I guess. Um, and then obviously the training as well, trying to, trying to keep that ticking over as well. The Renaults look really strong this year, Dan. So we're on the edge of our seats up late watching you. What's that been like, you know, to, you know, particularly as you, as you fire into turn one early on in the race, to battle with the likes of Max and Lewis? That must give you some confidence. It's, it's been awesome, that. And, and I guess that's, that's one thing I didn't touch on, you know, in, in between races, it's with the team, having, you know, debriefs away from the track with them, trying to obviously improve the car. Um, or even, you know, in myself, you know, going into Russia, it was a track I, I'd never really felt I'd thrived on. And, um, you know, I was studying a lot of, of data from previous years or onboards or just, just trying to look for things that I've been missing. So I guess that's one element of, of things I'm doing in, in, the, in the off weeks as well. For us this year, it's been awesome. It's, it's what we, I guess, really expected by year two. And, and now it's, it's kind of coming, coming through nicely. So 
Racing on the front is cool. I mean, I've, I've ran third a few times. It's, you know what, the, the good thing is, and I'm getting excited and everyone's like, well, he's won races, like why, why is third so exciting? But, you know, it, it's good to be back up there and it feels, it feels right. You know, it doesn't feel foreign. I feel comfortable. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I know it's been a while, but um, it, it feels, let's say, natural. <laughs> so what are the expectations then in this, in this back end of the year? And is the team boss, is Cyril getting nervous about the prospect of a tattoo? <laughs> Look, at, at first, at first, I think he was, he was very nervous. Um, and now I would say I've never seen someone look so excited at, at the thought of getting a tattoo. <laughs> um, look, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's, uh, it's been a little talking point and it's, it's been exciting to, to think about, you know, the idea of it happening. Um, and we've come close and, and I really believe that, put it this way, I, I believe if I keep going at this level and, and in terms, I know the team is, is obviously doing their part, but if I, let's say, remain consistent and driving at the level, which, which I, I know I am at the moment, then I, I do believe we'll get an opportunity. You know, something will arise and, and I, if I'm there to take it, then, yeah, so I, I kind of, I guess I'm saying if, I, if I'm doing what I'm doing now, I'll put myself in a position to, to take it before the year's out. So, uh, yeah, just got to keep, keep it up. Fans are going to latch onto that. That sounds terrific. Um, any tattoo ideas? Because I think you have the right of say on what he gets if this happens. Is that right? Yeah, I, I do. I do. So... Um, size and placement is, 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 is <laughs> but the, the design is mine. And, uh, okay. I, like the safest, not the safest, probably like the, the coolest thing in a way is, is some form of honey badger. Um, and, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. I, uh, I kind of figured as well, like it could happen in, you know, if it, obviously if it does happen, you know, probably the, the track we do it at or, or the country we're in. It might be symbolic for something, and, and the, it could just be something that we're like, oh, that, that marks a spot here, so let, let's, let's get that. Awesome stuff, mate. You mentioned earlier in the chat about spending that, that extra period of time at home in Australia. You know, COVID um, more or less created that, that window. How beneficial was that for you? And can you see in, in all the, the travel trickiness that we have at the moment, will you still get back over summer? Is that the plan? That's... It's the plan. Um, it's it's obviously at the moment it looks a little uh, touch and go. I think with uh, as as far as I understand, there's still like the two week uh, quarantine in in a hotel. So if it's one of those ones. If I only get like three four weeks at home over Christmas, to lose you know maybe more than fifty percent of that in a in a hotel room doesn't doesn't probably justify you know c- coming uh, all the way home. So and obviously that that time off for me is always precious. So to kind of lose two weeks of it in a hotel room, which obviously my, half my life is in a hotel room. Um, it, it doesn't sound too appealing. So look, I'll obviously follow, follow the, uh, the, the trend, see what's going to happen, you know, with the guidelines. And if I can get home, I will. Otherwise, uh, the thought of a cold uh, Christmas doesn't appeal to me. So I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, like going back, like the being home over that, that phase, you know, through, through lockdown, um, it was really valuable for so many reasons. Obviously, to spend a bit of time with the family was, was great, but also to have just to be in one location for so long, you know, not having to deal with jet lag flights. So to, to physically get my body to a really good place, that was, that was beneficial. And um, missing racing, you know, missing competition, uh, it just made me so much more excited to get back in it. And yeah, like, not that I'm even close to thinking about retirement, but if that was any idea of what retirement's like, yeah, I'm not. I'm certainly not ready for it. <laughs> I don't know if we're ready for it either, because the challenges with Marcus Stoinis and and your mate Scotty James, they were epic, mate. Did you ever stop yourself and go, oh, hang on, maybe this one's a step too far. Maybe the team won't like this, or maybe Marcus won't be up for that, or Scotty can't do that for whatever reason. Did you Did you ever have a ceiling? Well, I don't know. We. <laughs> a little bit about it um but i think at that point as well like everyone was was probably going a little stir crazy so it was like <laughs> anything kind of was gonna go and and i i feel like yeah everyone had uh because we didn't really know at that point as well when things were going to get back to let's say normal so uh i didn't feel i felt like it was if there was any other time to get away with something that that was the time 
Let's say that. For sure. Everybody in Australia is talking about um, Oscar Piastri's amazing F3 championship win. He's part, of course, of the of the Renault program. How closely have you perhaps worked with him and, and what did you say to him after the win? Yeah, so I, I mean, firstly, I, I won't claim I won't claim any, any of his success. Um, I, I got to meet him, I think it was the back end of last year um, at, at the factory and then um, met him pre-season this year and, and then, yeah, you bump into him a little bit at the, at the track. But it was more really because of everything going on this year, it was more just trying to message him um, just to either say well done or kind of go well, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to certainly claim claim any of that. I, I think he's really earned it, and he was he was really awesome this year. I think um, you could just tell, like dro- drove with, I guess, a good level of confidence, but also his, I think, racecraft decision making was was really quite impressive um, for his first year in the class as well. And you know, they're they're on our weekends. You know, that everyone's watching them, and and they know that all the teams and drivers are watching them. I mean, all us F1 drivers watch the races because it's it's fun and it's something to do as well. So we're, we're all looking and um, it was, uh, it was really cool. And I think obviously with four Aussies in, in the championship this year, obviously great, great that one got the win, but um, it was just nice to see like four, four kids competing on, on such a big, a big scale. Now it was cool. That was kind of my next question. You've led me just to the, the pride in that because as someone who's a seven time GP winner, so, uh, you know, such a major figure in the paddock now and at that stage of your career to see these, that this this next phase, this next wave coming through, there must be a great sense of pride in that. There is absolutely, you know, I I, um, I would love. I mean, I love uh, I love flying the flag, um, but it would be awesome if, if someone could could come up and, and help help fly it as well. You know, that's that would be great to have. You know, a few more Aussies in here, and um, it was really cool to see. You know, and I think at times, you know, all all, all four guys had you know whether, whether it was a standout qualifying session or, or a good race charging through the field. Um, so it was, it was nice to see, nice to see that, um, you know, a few of these kids are having, having a real go and, and having some good success with it. We love the fact that you're supporting and keen to support that, that um, next group of stars, if you like, and help them through the ranks. Just talk us about some of the work that you've been doing, particularly in the karting space, Dan, in that regard. Yeah, it's, I think there's, there's always, I mean, firstly, there's, uh, you get satisfaction from, from helping out someone I think in, in anything you do in life you know whether it's I don't know giving someone a hand so to speak so um but there's always that feel good factor so I've always I've always liked that I, I like I like um I guess at this point now yeah like spreading some of my knowledge or wisdom as, as I'm now 31 but um but yeah just giving someone a hand you know it's it's all giving someone a pat on the back so um the karting stuff so there was actually the there was the world champs uh on the weekend um and uh, Dutch Dutch driver who's done really well with with Ricardo Kart, uh, Marin Kremers. He's he's been killing it, and he was on pole and, and finished second. Um, but that was really cool to see, you know, the the cart up the front there. Um, and then yeah, we're doing some stuff. There's a, a series in series in the in the UK at the moment, um, which is Daniel Ricardo series, and it's um, basically just trying to get. Obviously, there's the world champs level and all that, which is obviously very serious and, and also <laughs> not cheap. Um, but then there's, you know, wanted to create a bit of an entry level um, series as well that, you know, doesn't seem so daunting, so, doesn't seem so intimidating. You know, everyone can rock up and essentially um, pay for the championship, but every, the, the carts are all taken care of, owned by the series. You know, there's all even uh, machinery mechanics and all that. So... Um, and yeah, obviously that's, that's been doing pretty well in England and, um, there was already a bit of a formula there. So if that, you know, continues and whatever, then I I would obviously love to bring that, um, to Australia. And and once it's really, you know, hit the ground running, um, and then obviously the, the Ricardo races as well back home. So yeah, it's, it's trying to, trying to find, I mean, I love to do it all. Um, obviously time is always of the essence, but, um, but yeah, I think little things here and there and, and to maybe grow over, over the next five, 10 years is, is certainly what I look to do. Mate, that sounds terrific. Fingers crossed. We would love to see that down under. We we'll, won't we'll hold you up for too much longer with this chat. Let's come back to, I think, the key thing that, that's emerged in this discussion. And that, that is your, um, you know, how close you can almost taste that, that podium, how excited you are by the prospect of that in, in the Renault. Looking at, at 
the remainder of the schedule for the year, where do you think you know, lots lots of cards have to to fall, obviously, but but. Is there a track that you can think of, Dan, where you, you're like, yeah, that's a, we're a real good chance there? I, I mean, on, honestly, so the weather this week uh, coming up to Nürburgring looks, I mean, it could be snowing for all I know. It's, it's been wet and cold there for, I think, the last few weeks. Um, so it, it could be one of those weekends where it's, you know, a wet race. And I mean, when was the last time a wet race was a boring race in F1? It, it doesn't, doesn't exist. So... You know, it's, it's these ones which I feel could create maybe the biggest opportunity. Um, I think these sort of races, you either become hero or zero, you know, it's, it's especially in the midfield. Um, so it could, it could be this weekend. Um, otherwise, I think Bahrain, Bahrain the, uh, what they're calling like the Bahrain Oval, could be quite interesting. Um, so I think we're doing that one in, in week two of Bahrain, which is... It's it's essentially there's not many corners and it's going to be I think a lot of drafting, slipstreaming, um, and a lot of it's just very high speed and, and we've seemed to have a pretty, let's say slick car on on the high speed circuit so maybe that one could could work well for us as well. Awesome stuff! Thank you so much for talking to us. I've learned a little bit in this discussion today. We know the honey badger. We know the the character out of the car and how how serious you are when that helmet goes on. But I've learned that you're a bit corporate. And also, you're quite wise, Daniel Ricciardo. So that leaves us to a, a line out of Anchorman, doesn't it? You're, you know, you're so wise, Baxter. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm trying to learn. I, I would, I would give credit to the team around me, but uh, yeah, uh, we're trying to. I've been mean, trying to have some fun as well. Like with, obviously, there's there's a business side to any any sport, but it's it's also just you know good for me to have other other avenues away from racing just to keep my mind ticking over. And like you said, just kind of learning all the time. I think privileged to, to travel the world and learn from places you go and people you meet. So yeah, trying to educate myself a little further. We love catching up with you, mate. Thank you so much. Go get them over these remaining races and we'll be with you every lap. We hope it's a, a great you know finish to this season. Cheers, Rusty. Always appreciate it. Always great to catch up with Daniel Ricardo. He's mentioned Ricardo's races there and some of the other great things, of course. For all the latest news and information on motorsport in Australia, the place to go is motorsport.org.au. Bye for now.